Well, we had this gentleman on all last season. Really enjoyed having him on. Won him on again this year. Continues to move up the ranks in coaching. He's uh, now the uh, assistant basketball coach once again at San Diego State. Getting a little air time during those uh, uh, timeouts. Uh, coming out of the huddle. Barking instructions to some of the players. Aztecs off to a 5-1 and one start. They'll be back at it with their big rivalry game on Thursday night at Viejas Arena against USD. 13th ranked team in the country right now, uh, according to the AP poll today. 14th in USA Today coaches poll. Always a pleasure to welcome assistant basketball coach of the Aztecs, David Velasquez, to the program. David, welcome. Hope uh, you and the family, uh, once you got back from Hawaii, uh, had a great uh, holiday weekend. Yeah, we had a good time out in Hawaii. We didn't get have much of a weekend when we returned. Uh, coach did a great job by letting the team hang out in Hawaii on Thanksgiving. <laughs> after three games and three days. And uh, we actually got home, and I hit the road recruiting this weekend. And now we got back at it today for practice. So it's uh, – basketball never stops. It's like, the, it's like the T-shirt you read from Nike, and that's just one of those things where we're excited about where we're at, but we know we have uh, room to grow. Well, I'll tell you, those three games you guys played in the Maui Invitational over there in, in Lahaina, a lot different than the three games we watched back here in San Diego before you guys left. All of a sudden, you guys pushed the right buttons as far as your offense, and and there's still some work to go there maybe on the perimeter game, but, boy, those were three fantastic basketball games. Yeah, we were excited. You know, as a staff, being around Coach Fisher, we have, we have really learned not to overreact. And, and a lot of the, our offensive worries – we were getting good shots. We needed to just settle down and make them, the shots we had been making for over 30 practices. So uh, we were excited about how we played in, in Maui. Uh, we obviously didn't leave the way we wanted it to end, but we were excited about how hard our guys played, how many different guys stepped up. Every night was a different player who made winning plays for us. Uh, even in the Arizona game, there were some guys out there that really did some nice things. And, and and like you said, there's obviously room for improvement, and that's our job as a staff and, and as a team that's been around the block a few times to know that we can't be complacent with where we're at and we we have room to grow on both ends of the floor. You know, I guess I'm kind of looking, uh, you know, down the road. I think as a coach, you always are, you know, looking at things, you know, down the road as far as combinations to be played. And, and I talked with Coach Fisher about this a couple of weeks ago on the air, so it's not like – uh, you know, I, I've come out uh, with this uh, great uh, observation, but I asked him before you guys ever played a game about seeing Skylar Spencer and Angelo Choll on the floor at the same time. And he said, right now, you know, we're not really going to probably do that a whole lot. I'll tell you, from what I saw, and I watched all three games, somewhere along the line, I think uh, those guys are going to have to play together against some of these bigger teams uh, You know, as you get deeper into the year and once you get into the NC two ways. Yeah, Coach. I mean, what, with what you're saying, it's something we talk about all the time. And There's one thing to see something at practice, but there's another thing to have some games under your belt, how other opponents play you. And, and we're still learning this team. And the one good thing about having all these players and all these players that are so versatile and hard to guard and can defend so many positions is that, yeah, we, we might make that adjustment as we move forward. Uh, there's been some things we've done this year that we did not foresee happening so early in the year uh, that have happened. And, and so for us to say that, you know, you're, you're wrong or I, I don't think that's going to happen is false. I think we're learning our team uh, each game by game and, you know, we have a game plan on Thursday that we might be different for what we do on Sunday versus Washington. So it, it, we got to continue to see how this team grows. And like I said, as a staff, it's our job to really kind of figure out the best combinations versus the best opponent day in and day out. Winston Shepard today uh, named the Mountain West Conference uh, Player of the Week, a well-deserved honor, his first of his uh, – career with San Diego State, and, you know, he's still not a great outside shooter. If he can get that mid-range game down, he's going to be dangerous, make those guys be honest, because he can go to the bucket as good as anybody. But the one area where you can tell this guy really worked on is at the free throw line. He's going to knock down a high percentage of those free throws, much better than he has each of the last two years, I think. Yeah, and, and Winston put a lot of time in it, and I think everybody can. Uh, that, you know, a lot of the time that Winston spent this summer getting better 
was figuring out a way for him to score at the free throw line. And he looked at his stats and he saw how many points he left out there. Uh, that with well, those free throws, they all come back to themselves. And, and every guy as a man has to look and figure out why they're not making their free throws. Uh, Winston's a guy who's very, very confident. So it's definitely not a mental issue. He made some tweaks. He's much more confident at the line, but it's because of the time he spent getting better making his free throws. And like you said, with, with the perimeter jump shot, you know, with Winston, he's starting to learn when to take the perimeter jump shot, when to drive, and he's continuing to grow his game. And for his size and his ability and his skill set, uh, he, he's a hard guy to defend. I mean, we'd have a nightmare defending Winston if we ever had to play him. So many different things. Dwayne Poli looks like he's uh, pressing a little bit right now. He doesn't look like the same player that I saw a year ago. What are you seeing? I'm, you know, Dwayne's still Dwayne Poli from March that we all remember. You know, it's it's unfortunate. Well, last year was such a different team, and it's unfortunate for Dwayne to have so many people and even have the staff try to compare him to Dwayne of, of last year. I mean, Xavier drew so much attention that those shots he was getting were completely out of the flow. He was just trying to find space for Xavier to hit him in the open three or, or find him on the break for a one-on-one situation. We didn't run one play for Dwayne last year. Those plays were for X, and if X found Dwayne in the play, then he'd be able to score. Now, you know, there's a little bit of Dwayne trying to do more um, in, in, all facets, in all facets of his game offensively. But, yeah, you could say he started the year pressing a little bit, put a little bit too much pressure on himself. But I think he's starting to settle in. We saw in the Arizona game, had that eight straight points that, that were huge for us. And so as we move forward, you know, six games in, there's, there's no need to overreact to anything. Uh, but Dwayne will continue to improve throughout the year and really find his spots where he's comfortable offensively. You know, we're visiting with Dave Velasquez, assistant basketball coach at San Diego State. You know, I, I've seen Trey Kell play since he was a sophomore. And, uh, you know, the, the first three games, you know, he's starting. Uh, you guys, uh, you know, started him right at the get-go. And I think in those three games, I don't have the stats in front of me, I think he had nine points. And I'll never forget when you guys were getting ready to go to Hawaii. I was on the talk show, uh, you know, a little over a week ago. And I'm going, hey, this guy is going to be a great player. I've seen this guy. He can shoot. He can make free throws. And, man, I'll tell you what, I was the happiest guy in the world watching him play in those three games over in Hawaii because he started playing like uh, the, the kid that I saw, you know, way back when he was playing for Mike Hopton in 10th grade. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's, been a, it's been an ongoing joke with us that the, the Trey Kell we recruited isn't the one that, that played in those first three games. He he is an outstanding scorer. I, I mean, I watched him put up 30-plus in high school and AAU ball multiple, multiple times, and they weren't all just layups. I mean, the kid is a knockdown shooter. Um, but, you know, we put a lot on his plate. And, and for him to play point guard at the Division One level for a high major program in top 25 in the country – He's the starting point guard, and that f- first time he played point guard in one of our close scrimmages versus another high major Division One team, that was the first game in his entire life he ever started as a point guard. So once Trey was able to settle in, and we're lucky it came this fast, and that he really able to turn the corner in Maui because we put a lot of pressure on him to learn the point guard position, play off ball screens, get other guys' shots, defend the other point guard, press in the full court, so for us, you know, we knew that there was going to be a learning curve, but we are very excited about what we saw in Hawaii. And, and, and Trey's finally, and like he said, he's finally able to take a deep breath and kind of say, okay, I'm starting to get it now, and play with a little bit more confidence. Because when he was in high school, shoot, Coach Hop, let him take 20-plus shots. That's not going to happen out here. And, and then same thing with AU ball. So Trey's starting to find his spots where he can really kind of score the ball, find others, and, and, and like I said, do a lot of different things from the point guard position. Yeah, I mean, he did a lot of damage, you know, getting into the lane and, and using that big, strong body of his to, you know, get uh, shots up over bigger and, uh, you know, more experienced players. And, you know, he knocked down a few long-range shots, but you know what? You've seen him, David. You're talking about high school and, and club ball. I mean, he, he's got an unlimited range. I mean, w- this kid, he's got, you know, almost four full years of college basketball left. Yeah, and, you, and, and it's been 
so impressive to see the growth. And, and like you said, we and and we cannot overreact on six games. Dan, well, Trey's not Trey's just fine. Uh, he's continuing to grow his game. His his jump shot in high school was so darn pretty. I'll never forget the first time I watched Trey Kell play. He was playing La Jolla High School in in that gym over at St. Augustine that had that could fit about fifty people on it plus <laughs> both teams. It's as tiny as it gets. I walk in. And Trey hit seven threes in 11 minutes, and they win by 35 points. He played about 16 minutes, played five minutes the second half. He hit seven threes. I mean, you're talking back to back, and everyone in the gym knew he was shooting it. And and so for us to overreact on Trey not making shots right now, it it wouldn't be the smart thing to do because that's something your eyes can't lie about. So we evaluated, we saw he can really shoot the ball, and we're expecting him to start to be a little bit more comfortable and make a few of those shots. Yeah, and I'll tell you, the guy you guys are bringing in uh, behind him, the freshman Kevin Zabo, he ain't too shabby either. No, Kevin's great. Kevin's great. Kevin's Kevin's an absolute warrior. He's a winner. Uh, and the one thing that Coach Fisher does so well in instilling in these players, the further along the line down that they get, is to have play with confidence. Well, Kevin came in here with already so much confidence in who he was and wanting to learn and knowing he had to get better, but knowing at the end of the day he's still a really good player. He showed up here a really good player, played for the Canadian national team as their point guard. I mean, the, the kid has been through a lot of wars uh, throughout his life and, and playing in the highest level of prep basketball and playing behind every player on his team, went high major basketball as well as him. And so it's been, it's been fun to see Kevin's growth since he got here. But he, you know, I love watching Kevin play. You talk about a kid who's unafraid – goes out there, makes the smart play, can hit the jump shot. We, we run plays for him, and if he knows it's coming for him, boom, he knocks down two corner threes in Maui. I mean, Kevin's been an, an absolute joy to be around every day. You know, David, and we're visiting with Dave Velasquez, assistant basketball coach at San Diego State. I mean, I, I got to be honest with you. I went home and watched all three of these games. I stayed up for the double overtime win. I mean, this was great college basketball, but really by, you know, BYU played great that night. You guys played great. Arizona was great. You guys kind of took a two-pit in that middle ball game. But, I mean, this time of year, coming up and playing in those tight ball games like that is only going to make you guys better, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, Thursday night against USD, who you only beat by a point last year, uh, by uh, a Washington, or when you go to Cincinnati, I mean – these games that you played in Hawaii are going to come back and really help you later in the year. Yeah, you would hope they would. And, and that's why you think you have a good team. And, you know, these scheduling, these schedule d- deals that we do from playing in the Maui, we knew that was going to happen three years ago. Um, we knew we would have a good team this year uh, with J.J. being a senior, with Dwayne and Akil and Winston being a junior, and so with Skyler and Angelo. I mean, we knew that we were going to have a pretty solid team returning. We obviously didn't know who the freshman would be then. But, uh, we, you know, we think that having this schedule will only help us for conference play when we have to go on the road and play the, the at Wyoming, at New Mexico, at Boise, all these hard games. And you're absolutely right. You're hoping, oh, you're hoping in March it really helps you with, you, with your seeding and, and the NCAA tournament committee. But really it's how your team's going to grow through all these battles that we have. You talk about BYU, one of the fastest running teams in the country, and then the next night you go out and you're, you're less than 24 hours later, you're playing Pittsburgh, who, who's the pick to finish fifth in the ACC behind, you know, the Duke and the Can- and Duke and uh, Syracuse and Louisville and all these types of teams. And then on the third day, you play the third-ranked team in the country, uh, Arizona, who's just, you know, who our battles is so everyone's been well-documented. Uh, on how well we played them, and so it's it's great. It's it's awesome. I think it it provides some film for us. It provides some opportunity for different guys to play since you do play back to back to back. And like you said, this stretch coming up is is as tough as it gets. I mean, USD is a game that we gave up a wide open three. If they they knock it down, they win on a sideline out of bounds. And then you go to at Washington, who was was everyone forgets the games you win, coach. But they were up five with seven minutes to go on our place last year, and then Long Beach, then at Cincinnati. So our next four games, you would hope we really grew in Maui and have a chance to to get better as we hopefully win the next four. Hey, uh, well put, my friend. Hey, thanks for the time. Uh, Good luck uh, Thursday night against USD, and we'll look forward to doing this again next week. 
Thanks, Coach. Great to talk to you. Always a pleasure. David Velasquez, assistant basketball coach of San Diego State.